Fed chief under fire. Ben Bernanke going to have a rough time on Capitol Hill, potentially at his confirmation hearings on Thursday. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders says he will not vote to reconfirm Bernanke to a second four-year term. He is part of the problem. He is the smartest guy in the world. Why did he do anything to prevent us from sinking into this disaster the Wall Street caused and which he was a part of. No, I will not vote for Bernanke to stay on as chairman. And, and Senator Sanders is not alone. Note of all the legislation to come out so far, Senator Dodd at, at uh, the Senate Finance Committee has been the most aggressive and explicitly has sought to reduce the Fed's powers in financial reform. Meanwhile, in a new op-ed in the Washington Post, Bernanke admits that the Fed and other world regulators indeed could have done more to e rein in the excessive risk-taking that was going on as a result of the Fed providing cheap or free money to basically any bank that wanted it, but he does defend the bank's action and is rejecting lawmakers' attempt to audit the Fed as to which backdoor bailouts by the trillion they have provided and continue to provide to banks. Uh, and Bernanke objects to any efforts to strip away the, the Fed's powers to continue to do that sort of thing. Uh, he writes, quote, the Fed played a major part in arresting the crisis, and we should be seeking to preserve, not degrade, the institution's ability to foster financial stability and to promote economic recovery without inflation. What the chairman doesn't mention is that the Federal Reserve has been central in starting these crises over the past 10 years through the egregious mismanagement of economic policy during the past decade. Money simply too cheap. Cheap money makes for all sorts of fun and games from Bernie Madoff to Dubai to AIG. Meanwhile, back in 2005, at the height of the housing boom, again, banks making more money, the more money they lend, how, what's the best thing to lend to? Homeowners, everybody wins, right? Good times. Bernanke dismissed econo econo economists' warnings about a possible collapse as a result of banks funneling money to try to collect those beautiful fees into our housing market. Take a listen to the Fed chief. It's a pretty unlikely possibility. We've never had a decline in house prices on a nationwide, nationwide basis. So what I think is more likely is that house prices will slow, maybe stabilize, might slow consumption spending a bit. I don't think it's going to drive the economy too far from its full employment path, though. We all know the statistics. I won't recount them to you. It was slightly different. Uh, what about the subprime mortgage meltdown? Bernanke missed that one, too. Here's what he said in February of 2007. There's not much indication at this point that subprime mortgage issues have spread into uh, the broader mortgage market, which still seems to be healthy, um, and the lending uh, side of that still seems to be healthy. Uh, we welcome back to the morning meeting Senator Bernie Sanders. He's an independent from the state of Vermont. He says Bernanke indeed should go. Uh, quite simply, Senator, why? He's part of the problem. The middle class in America is collapsing. We've seen incredible greed and recklessness and illegal behavior on Wall Street. This guy was running the ship, and he didn't see it, and he allowed it to happen. You know, Bernanke served in the Bush administration as the chairman of his economic advisors in 2005. The people last year voted for change, and it makes no sense to me that President Obama is reappointing somebody who was appointed by Bush who is a conservative Republican who missed the boat on the most significant economic crisis since the Great Depression. We need a whole new direction in the Fed and in our economic policies, a direction that stands up for a change, not for the rich, not for the top 1%, not for the giant financial institutions, but for the working class and the middle class of this country. And nobody, but nobody thinks that Ben Bernanke is that person. If you were to look at the Fed chief and the way, and forget the Fed chief, if you were to look at the way the Federal Reserve operates and, and the fact that they give special privileges to bank CEOs who, who are custodians of other people's money, other people's savings, other people's business profits, other people's life insurance policies, and the U.S. taxpayer gives those businesses unlike any other, like the police get special privileges uh, carrying weapons, et cetera, in public. The banks get special privileges from the taxpayer, easy access to money. What is wrong with the Fed chief providing free money to the banks without disclosing the collateral <laughs> or anything about it? Why should the Fed chief not be allowed to give freely trillions of dollars to bank CEOs to do whatever they want with and not have well, to that, disclose you, it? Obviously, I mean, you're asking the exact question that I, as a member of the Senate Budget Committee, asked Bernanke. And I said to him last year, you know, you have lent out trillions of dollars of taxpayer money at zero interest 
to huge financial institutions. Can you tell me, Mr. Bernanke, which institutions received that money? And you know what his answer was? I don't. No, I won't tell you. And on that day, I introduced legislation which would demand that he tell us. And in fact, that passed the Senate. We haven't gotten it past the Congress yet. We're working on, with Ron Paul, an audit of the Fed. What we also have got to ask Mr. Bernanke is if the taxpayers of this country have spent $700 billion bailing out Wall Street because they are too big to fail, why is the three out of the four largest financial institutions today are bigger than they were before the bailout? Why is it okay that four large financial institutions writes half the mortgages, two-thirds of the credit cards in this country, and controls 40% of the deposits. And why Look, are the, the bottom line... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I, the yeah. bottom line to me mm -hmm. is that the middle class in this country is collapsing. We've seen that trend downward for the last many, many years, way before Bernanke. Yeah. He's not the cause of the problem. But we need a new direction. We need President Obama to take this country in a new way, new economic policies, and you don't appoint the same old guys if you're going to do that. Senator, I hope you come back soon. I appreciate uh, the time and the conversation. Thank you. All right, Senator Bernie Sanders.